On this edition of VCU Insight, we go behind the scenes of VCU's latest musical production. And take a look at an inch woman Bayesian sweeping across campus. Students rally together to spark change in drug policies. And we take a look at how students are speaking out against sexual violence. All that and more when VCU Insight starts right now. And welcome to VCU Insight. I'm Brenda Acevedo. And I'm Ashley Fisher. Thank you for joining us. VCU is expanding and adding buildings throughout the downtown and fan areas of Richmond to make room for its growing student population. But for one local restaurant, damage from the construction is taking its toll on business, and the owner is taking action. Insight's Ashley Chapman investigates. Construction on the VCU West Grace housing project spans a city block on Grace Street, east of Schaefer Street, and has been underway for about a year. It'll continue for more than another year. Sahara is a small hookah bar and restaurant that sits right in the middle with construction on three sides. Restaurant owner Zahir Idlebuy refused to be shown on camera but says his business has plummeted. He's suing VCU and the construction company Whiting Turner for $1.3 million. The suit was filed on February 27th. VCU Public Relations Specialist Mike Porter says VCU refuses to comment and Whiting Turner's lawyer didn't return calls. VCU made an offer to buy the property before construction began, but Idlebuy's landlord refused to sell. Idleby says he has no choice. He's locked into a four-year lease and claims the lack of parking scares off customers, his monthly profits have been cut in half, and that two-thirds of his staff has quit. Sahara customer and VCU student Angelica Davis says she doesn't think parking is an issue. I will say there's a few, a lot of the parking was taken away, but on that one strip on Gray Street, you could fit maybe 15 cars. But to Idleby, it's personal. The suit against Whiting Turner Construction Company is for damages to the property, including trash left on the front lawn. Several tables have also been broken by workers who sit on them during their lunch breaks. VCU says they can't be sued. They're claiming sovereign immunity, meaning the university is acting as a governmental agency and the construction is for the greater good. Bill Oglesby is a lawyer and communications law assistant professor at VCU who isn't connected to the case. He says cases like this are hard to predict. If they can convince the court that there really are a million dollars in actual damages, then they may be successful. But obviously, if either one of the answers um, is accepted, then the restaurant would get nothing. Idleby says the increased student traffic may bring new business once the construction is complete, but doesn't know if he'll be able to hang on that long. For VCU Insight, I'm Ashley Chapman. It's estimated that every two minutes someone is sexually assaulted in the United States. More than half of those cases go unreported, and students are speaking up. Like it's something that people don't like to talk about. People feel ashamed of, which they shouldn't be. You know, we like to to let people know that it's not their fault, that they can speak about it, and that this is a safe place to speak about it. If you or someone you know is struggling with sexual assault or violence, contact the National Sexual Assault Hotline at 1-800-656-HOPE. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and VCU's Men Against Violence group has been bringing the White Ribbon Campaign to campus for more than five years. White Ribbon Week consists of events centered around education and prevention of sexual violence. The White Ribbon came about in 1991 in Canada where a group of men felt that it was their responsibility to encourage other men and boys to speak up about violence against women. Today, the campaign is in more than 55 countries across the world. Anyone signing a pledge saying they're opposed to this violence gets a White Ribbon. 
William Harriman, Men Against Violence event coordinator, was out in VCU student commons getting people to sign the pledge and earn their white ribbon. He says women in trouble should do something about it. Never ever be afraid to get help, um, especially on VCU campus. Uh, there are plenty of resources. There's a wellness resource center. Obviously, don't be afraid to go to the police uh, if you ever feel like you're in a violent situation. VCU's Wellness Center stands ready to help or provide more information. Spring has arrived and so has that infamous dust. It's yellow and it's everywhere this season, pollen. It's easy to spot on windshields, tires, practically anywhere outdoors. According to the Asthma and Allergy Foundation, about 10 to 30 percent of adults suffer from allergies causing a variety of symptoms. Between February and April, it's likely that trees are to blame. Symptoms occur occurring during warmer months are usually from grass and plant pollens. VCU junior Vicki Nuda finds it a hassle to put up with her allergies. It's pretty disgusting, that's for sure. Like, I, it's very uncomfortable, especially at night since it seems to get worse at night. VCU University Student Health Services has some tips for dealing with the pollen. Wash sheets and linens in hot water, keep living areas clean and dust free, and monitor your local pollen forecast. And pollen isn't the only thing you'll see this spring season as spring fashions make their debut. Our Brian Hill is in studio with a special guest to discuss an annual VCU fashion show. Today we're speaking with Marion Batts, president of Group Motor Fashion Organization. They're preparing for their 12th annual spring fashion show. Thank you for joining us. No problem. So there are a lot of VCU fashion shows and Group mm -hmm. Motor's been around for 12 years now. So um, how do you think that Group Motor differs from a lot of the other shows on campus? Um, well, Group Motor was started by students, so it is an actual student organization. Uh, it's a lot more interactive with the crowd. Uh, I know the crowd, the, the audience always goes away, you know, happy, I guess. Like, they, they're not bored during the show. They're not on their phones. They're not falling asleep, you know, and like, like other fashion shows. And it's, it's just more intimate, I would say, mm -hmm. because we do have it in the ballroom. You know, we don't have it in a huge venue, so it's just more intimate. And the crowd feels like they're more involved with the show. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, for people who don't know, where does the name Group Moda come from, or what does it represent? Um, well, 12 years ago, they came up with this name, but uh, Moda actually means fashion, mm -hmm. so basically fashion group. Okay, and um, this year's show is called Murder Moda Road. Uh, how did yes. you all come up with this name for this show? Um, well, it's based off of the board game Clue. I'm not sure if you're familiar mm -hmm. with that game, um, but my executive board, we just brainstormed one day, and they were like, hey, what about Clue? And I thought about it, and I was like, that's actually a really good idea. So, I mean, it, it was just a, a collective effort, you know, to come up with this idea. And everybody's really excited about it. And um, the clothes that you have for the show, how do you all come up with the clothing for the show? Um, we use local stores. We borrow their clothes. And also, we uh, use local designers. So there are tons of students who have started their own uh, clothing lines, so we're using them. And then also a lot of the fashion students who design, we, uh, we use them too. So just to give them exposure, you know, it's, it's great for them. Okay. And um, I also saw that you're going to be donating a percentage of the ticket sales to uh, SCAN, the Greater Richmond Stop Child Abuse Now Foundation. Um, how did you come up with that, and is this the first year that you've done it? Uh, yes, this is actually the first year that we've donated proceeds to a charity. Uh, I just felt that it's important. I actually interned for SCAN, and they're a nonprofit, so they always need money. And also, April is National Child Abuse Awareness Month, so I was like, oh, that's perfect, you know. Um, so we were really excited to be able to give money to SCAN, and they're really excited that, you know, we've agreed to it. And um, do you know what any of the money will go towards? Um, just, th they have all different types of programs. They're always uh, doing events and, and all kinds of things. So it's just going to be spread around, basically. Okay. And uh, picking back on, uh, there have been a lot of shows at VC VCU and how Group Motor differs. Uh, Group Motor also includes choreography instead of just straight runway in the shows. Why do you feel as though that that's necessary and why do you like having that in the show? People like choreography. <laughs> the audience really likes choreography. It just makes it interesting, you know. Fashion shows, they are interesting, but if you're not into fashion, then they're not interesting to you. So if you add another element, that draws in more people. 
Um, and it just, it makes the show more lively, <laughs> I guess, you know? Yeah. Okay, and uh, I know last year you guys had Elle Maxwell, who was a uh, performer during the intermission, and this mm -hmm. year she's hosting. Who can the audience look forward to seeing this year? This year we have a local uh, rap artist, and he's also a VCU student. His stage name is JF. Uh, and also we have a singer from um, a local band called The Killing Daylights. Her name is Megan Browning. She'll be opening up the show. And then we have the VCU Poppers, which is a, a dance group here at VCU. So all VCU students, we're keeping it local and, and VCU. Well, I'm sure everyone's going to be looking forward to the show. Yes, we're excited. We've been speaking with Marion Batts, president of Group Mode of Fashion Organization. The show is April 22nd at 7 p.m. and tickets are $3. So we hope we'll be, thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. Earlier this month, VCU art students got the chance to display their artwork in the Anderson Gallery. A variety of artworks such as paintings, sculptures, ceramics, clothes, and videos filled the gallery's three floors. Exhibitions like this one are held annually to showcase students' skills and hard work from the nationally top-ranked department. According to art gallery officials, more than 500 students applied to have their art displayed. Only 91 of their works were chosen by associate curator at the Carnegie Museum of Art in Pittsburgh, Tina Kukulski. One of the students chosen for the exhibit was senior sculpture major Egbert Bong Molaitong. He says he enjoys the exhibit. I think like seeing how different everything is, it's just, it's interesting and it maybe somehow can influence my own practice. The next exhibit at the Anderson Art Gallery will be the MFA thesis exhibitions. Round one, which runs through April 29th. VCU student got a little help from Bruno Mars and Rihanna as they played in the background during the Stop Hunger Now inaugural food packaging event, sponsored by Stop Hunger Now VCU. The event on April 1st brought the university community together with volunteers packaging dehydrated meals with food like rice, soy, and vegetables. The meals are sent to educational-based programs to help feed children around the world. With nearly 250 volunteers, they were able to reach the expected goal of 40,000 meals. The packages provide a reasonable serving for, for six at a cost of around 25 cents. Organizers say the event was not only to support Stop Hunger Now, but to bring the VCU campuses together. Hunger is a unifying cause. Like It's a unifying thing that happens throughout the world. And it doesn't matter if you're studying medicine, if you're studying pharmacy, or if you're just studying biology. I'm Hunger is something that unites everyone. Stop Hunger Now is an international relief program that provides food and other life-saving aids to developing countries around the world and in crisis situations. Stop Hunger Now VCU was able to buy the foods needed with over $1,000 raised in donations. After the event, the boxes were sent to the local Richmond branch. The Richmond area has been experiencing a pest problem this spring. There are no danger to us, but trees are another matter. VCU Insights' Philip Newsom explains the impact of the seasonal invasion. Hanging over your head, falling on your shoulders, or even under your shoe, these little critters are popping up everywhere. They're always hanging down from the trees and the buildings. You walk somewhere, you end up feeling like you gotta pick a hundred of them off you. Canker worms, or inchworms as many people call them, have been populating the city in huge numbers. We actually get a, have gotten a lot of calls. Um, homeowners are calling, they're trying to figure out what's going on, why they have so many. Sanderson assures that this is common for this time of year. Canker worms usually come out in the spring to eat before they go back into the ground until fall. They've been hanging around in trees and bushes, getting their fill for the long haul. But that's what has people concerned. The worms' heavy eating tend to leave tree leaves pretty bare. And Sanderson says it can also have long-term effects. If there are trees that are defoliated a lot, it can actually decrease their health and make them susceptible to other problems. Otherwise, people see them as just an annoyance. You know, like get on your face and like the little strings from the trees and stuff and just like flying everywhere. It's just annoying. Now these little guys may be harmful to trees, but not to us. We're basically away from them to move from point A to point B. Sanderson says they should die off in a couple of weeks. But if you're still worried about your trees... Something sticky around the base of your tree and what will happen is the females will get caught by that sticky stuff and cannot climb up to meet the guys. That should at least slow down the egg laying. 
but in the meantime, people will just have to get used to doing the inchworm dance. Oh my gosh, like oh my gosh, there's an inchworm on me! For VCU Insight, I'm Philip Newsom. VCU has planted its first seed in its very own community garden, and it's open to anybody with a green thumb. Insight's Melissa Smith has a special guest to talk about it. Today I'm speaking with VCU Community Garden Manager Alexandra Little. She's helped with the community garden since its planning first began last spring. Thanks for joining us. Sure. So I heard about this community garden that's coming out and it's located on the MCV campus, correct? Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Um, well, last spring um, I'm a part of a group called Green Unity, which is an environmental organization for VCU. And we were thinking about projects we wanted to work on, and gardens were something that everyone really loved, and food was something that everyone really cared about, and everyone's relationship to food. So mm -hmm. we decided we kind of wanted to pursue something like a community garden for all of VCU's community to be a part of. And, that's, and then we started pursuing it last fall, really. So it's available for all of VCU, or...? Yep. All yes. Uh, every all the students, all the faculty. Right now, all the plots are full. But if you, if anybody wants to volunteer, we are looking and searching. Anyone can come be a part of it. I see. And how many plots have been filled so far? Um, well, there's there's 14 plots, but there's about um, 40 some people who are getting plots. Um, because we're splitting them up into different parts. And what type of are flowers? And I heard they were vegetables there. What's in that garden? And well, there's we have a pollinator garden, which is a long stretch along the Lyric Center, and that's just filled with flowers that will attract pollinators. And um, there's also um, uh, we have our two volunteer plots, which are right now planted with lots of vegetables and flowers too, which helps with pollination. But there's um, okra, lots of greens. Um, we have peppers and tomatoes and um, peas and carrots. And, and there's gonna be more like melons and stuff in the summer. And what are you all going to do with the vegetables once they're done growing? Well, with the volunteer beds, we're gonna be donating them um, to food banks, to just different organizations that need food um, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to give them a lot of produce because we have two really huge beds for that. And how long has this been on the planning process, this community garden? Uh, last fall, probably like right at the beginning of the semester, we really started booking it to make it happen. And um, VCU kind of got a lot more on board this semester. So it's been kind of like a school year to get, to get it where it is now. And, um, trying to think the community garden has how did they come up with where this vegetable how the vegetables were going to go or where they were going to go how did they think of up with that um, with the with the volunteer beds or like with the donations yes well w actually we were kind of trying to decide what we would do at a meeting last fall um, trying to decide whether we would make it all student involvement everyone just gets their own food they come in they work and they go or we would make it volunteer and have it donated or have it like split up for people. And then someone was just like, let's just do both. Let's have a couple beds for volunteers mm -hmm. and donations and a couple for people to really grow their own food and take it home. And when does it open up this community garden? Um, this Sunday is, when the, is the first day that all of the plot owners are gonna get to plant all their stuff. And this past, a couple weeks ago, we planted all the volunteer beds. So they're growing and getting watered right now. That's great. Yeah. We've been speaking with Anne Alexandra Little, manager of VCU's Community Garden. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. <laughs> April 20th isn't a national holiday, but it is a day associated with a drug that's notoriously popular among students looking to get buzzed. Insights Christine Hadid reports on a student organization trying to create a different buzz of its own. Institute on Drug Abuse calls it the most commonly used illegal drug in the United States. Others call it Kush, chronic, diesel, skunk, grass, herb, bud. Me and my friends, we like to call it spaghetti. And 420. All are names for marijuana or cannabis. And April 20th. Get it? 
420 is a date that many have come to see as a very prominent day within marijuana um, culture and it's uh, very prominently associated with the use of marijuana. Students for Sensible Drug Policy is an international grassroots network of students who say they're dedicated to ending the government's war on drugs. We believe that the war on drugs has failed, um, that alternative policies that treat drug use as a public health issue and not a criminal issue are ideal. And this year, VCU's chapter is using April 20th as an opportunity to generate support for alternative drug policies by holding their first In the Drug War concert and rally in Monroe Park. And while the group may seek to light fires of political activism, its leaders say getting students to light up is not its goal. We do not condone nor condemn drug use. But illegal drug use is something that VCU police do condemn. And Assistant Chief Chris Pruce says that whenever April 20th comes around, his force is on high alert. If there was a national larceny day, we would be out looking for you know, people committing larcenies. They can look, but Students for Sensible Drug Policy's co-president says police won't find a reason to incriminate his organization. The point of 420 should rather be from the use of an illegal substance to actually trying to, to reform the policies that make the substance illegal. Gilbert hopes that message will influence others to shift focus from smoking smoked. joint dope is dope I've ever smoked, right? to joining the reform efforts that have become his organization's higher purpose. For VCU Insight, I'm Christine Hadid. Established on campus in 2007, Students for Sensible Drug Policy at VCU has already earned the university some national recognition. The cannabis advocacy publication High Times Magazine featured VCU as one of its top 20 schools in the country for marijuana activism in 2010 and 2011. The reopening of the Cary Street Gym back in spring 2010 brought VCU an updated place for working out and recreational activities. This year, those updates have been recognized with a special award. For the first time, the National Intramural Recreational Sports Association named the gym one of nine outstanding sports facilities around the country. The association presents this award to facilities they think work well and have great architecture that other colleges could benefit from. Facility management say they kept the big picture in mind. Well, the first thing we did when we were building the facility and planning it is we tried to meet the students' needs. And the reason that we won this award is because of the uh, way we constructed the building. Deal says this is a tenth award received for the newly constructed facility. Here's a look at events going on around Richmond. Want to dine for a cause? Richmond's Restaurant Week kicks off Monday, April 23rd to the 29th. Visit participating restaurants for deals and a portion of the bill goes to feed more. For more info, go to richmondrestaurantweek.com. In celebration of its 30th anniversary, Style Weekly is hosting Shad Rock Music Festival featuring De La Soul, DJ Mass Effects, and other artists. The festival will be held Saturday, April 28th at Browns Island from noon to 11 p.m. VIP tickets are $100 and general admission tickets may be purchased for $35. See Richmond as you've never seen it before on foot with the Times Dispatch. Go discover Richmond Walk. The 10K Walk makes stops by some of the city's greatest treasures. The walk is Saturday, May 5th at 8 a.m. Registration starts at $25 and walk-up registration is available. Mayor Jones is hosting a health expo to promote good nutrition, sustainability, and active lifestyles. It will be held Saturday, April 28th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Greater Richmond Convention Center in Exhibit Hall A. And finally tonight, ever been curious about what goes on behind the scene of a play? Insight's Heather Rikers went to a rehearsal for VCU's main stage performance and found out just how much work is involved. <laughs> Through the month of April, people have been lining up to see the VCU Theater Department's performance of the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, about six quirky, overachieving students competing in a spelling bee. You guys, drop it! The actors got their scripts for the musical comedy in December and have had them for four months. Actor and graduate student Clayton Winters says for many plays, actors only have three to four weeks to learn a script. So we've had a long time to really get the words into our system and develop characters and make choices that we think 
pertain to the show and that the audience will like. In the days leading up to the play's opening night on April 6th, the team of actors and crew did four full days of dress rehearsals, each lasting four hours. They include everything, stage makeup, costumes, and lighting to make sure that these things run as smoothly as possible for show day. When the run-through is over, the director, Gary Hopper, and his assistant give their thoughts to the crew from notes taken during the show. People see the end result, right? And they don't see all the work that goes in to making those moments because it seems kind of, in a way, effortless. But, uh, and that's what we're about doing, but it's, uh, it's a lot, a lot of work. For the 13 actors, all that hard work pays off on opening night here at the Singleton Center. I think all of the students are doing a really great job and uh, a lot of them have come to the production with a really professional attitude and this particular show is an ensemble piece so there's a lot of community amongst the cast members and it's been really supportive. And with a lot of practice and a supportive cast by his side, Winter says he's excited for people to see the play because it's funny and entertaining. For VCU Insight, I'm Heather Rikers. Opening night brought out almost the full house with 230 people in attendance. It's amazing how much work they put into a play. Yeah, and you can really tell with the final product. That's it for this edition of VCU Insight. Make sure to check us out online at insight.vcu.edu. Thanks for watching. I'm Ashley Fisher. And I'm Brenda Acevedo. We'll see you next time.